Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at the markets as they continue to recover and pinpoint some recovery zones just as we pinpointed the bearish zones back in April and early May. Make sure you like the video up, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, Twitter, Instagram for daily Q&As. Links are all down below and if you want to be trading these markets, uh, if your exchanges went out, there are extra exchanges down below. SwiftX, CoinSpot for the Aussies and Binance for the international guys. That's enough from me. Let's dive in. Obviously, we're looking at the crash recovery, first signs of a recovery. I want to look at those on the chart, not to say that we are going to recover fully. Remember, nothing is guaranteed in the markets. And I just want to look at areas that are going to give us some early signs in terms of what may happen next. And then after that point, the scenarios uh, to figure out whether we are going to go up or down from that point. So we'll get to that in the charts. But firstly, from what I've seen in the markets over this last crash of the last couple of days, miss that I will avoid to play into, you know, during the next crash, or at least I want to make these uh, aware, some people aware, are uh, all time highs. So don't worry about it if we get to an all time high quickly or not. I believe that we'll probably take a longer time in this in this recovery process because the sentiment has shifted to bearish. So I don't think we're going to shoot straight up. If we do, fantastic. If we don't, then at least I'm prepared for it. And that's pretty much all this is about. I'm not going to get married to the point that I need to get to these all-time highs quickly because I think it's going to take a little bit longer. Buy on every dip. So I've showed this in the last couple of videos and essentially every time we got a 10% or 5%, 15% correction, the saying was buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Sure, we don't know that we're going to get a massive correction like this. I definitely didn't think so. But in terms of a, a buy the dip strategy, especially at all time highs when the market is, is very frothy, not much volume is coming into the market and the prices aren't going much higher in terms of Bitcoin, then I avoid buying all of those dips because there are times when there are better tasting dips than others. And there are some of the signals that I look for. Market crash can't be more than 40%. That was circulating a lot, especially with this super cycle. You know that I don't subscribe to the whole super cycle theory that we can't get big corrections because institutions won't sell, etc. We just saw the market crash over 50% from its high. So I, for me anyway, I'm definitely wiping this out, but I reserve the right to use it in titles because it does very well in search engine optimizations, just to let you guys know. But in terms of a theory, definitely not. Market crashes, they can crash as much as they want or as little as they want. There's no one saying otherwise. You can't predict that. You can't tell a market not to crash more than 40%. So they're the myths first up. Next on our menu, lessons. Lessons that I learned from this market. Avoid being played by the buzz phrases. So that just goes back to this whole super cycle thing and that we're going to get uh, all-time high soon and in institutions won't sell. So all of these are big buzz phrases. They're great. We will use them. We'll look at them. But as long as we don't get married to these buzz phrases, then it can we can keep uh, more level-headed about the markets. Uh, resets are good, just like we just saw. We've cleaned out a lot of lows and a lot of weak hands. Doesn't mean we're going to go straight up from here. As I said, probably a little bit sideways for a period of time. If we shoot straight up, great. Let's just keep watching the market. There are some points that I want to look at. Market data uh, as its resume. So essentially, I mentioned this in videos, the history of the market is its resume. We want to check that out to see what's happening further forward. That can be in any type of analysis, whether it's the Wyckoff method, GAN method, you're going more mathematics route, uh, quant, anything like that. You're going to use the data previously to give you an idea of what may happen or better probabilities of what's happening next. Not all dips are the same, just covered that. Don't get hyped into the whole buy the dip on every single dip, whether it's a 3% dip or a 15% dip. Learn from your emotions. So if you're sitting with us during the market crash uh, just a couple of days ago as it crashed for a couple of hours straight down, straight back up, that will uh, build you as a trader and an investor. So remember that emotion. It was very similar from what I remember to the COVID crash in March 2020. We had to sit through that. We had to learn from those emotions. And it really did feel like at that bottom that we could go further, that we could drop another 60% from that point. But it didn't happen. And there was a lot of capitulation signs then, which I'm seeing now. Markets don't repeat exactly the same, but there are some similarities. So we have to pay attention to those, just like we have to pay attention to our emotions as we continue to improve them. 
Watch for patterns, essentially the same thing there. Now, before we get back to the menu, let's have a look at the coin market caps. So we've got 1.8 trillion. We did dump to about 1.5 trillion. So we've got some money coming back into the market. Just because it flows out doesn't mean it's not gonna flow back in, especially with some solid lows. Now, the risk to the downside, as I was talking with the Investor Accelerator crew last night, you can find a link to that in the description down below. Basically, the risk to the downside is a, f a hell of a lot less from 30K down to next supports at 28K or 24K or 17 or 20K, a lot, lot less than where, what they were buying at 64K. So that's something to keep in mind. We're just looking at how much is the risk to the downside, how much potential do we see to the upside? Most people are seeing something in the 100K, plenty of other reasons to expect that. So we, we now can see a solid three or four X from that point. Nothing is guaranteeing us that, but from 64,000 or 60,000 Bitcoin, there's not even a 2X into that double figures. So now we have a good reset and that's good for the market. Bitcoin, 800 billion. Ethereum now has dropped below the 50%, but we're still pretty uh, high up there and we have recovered a lot. I had a support level around 2,800. Now we're at 2,900 after a drop down to 1,800, clearing out some lows and a very quick recovery. Cardano, dollar 80, 58 billion on the market caps. And some of the other coins that we'll look at today are Solana, which is sitting at $47, a very, very quick recovery again, which is an important sign for the differences between altcoins. Not all of them, not all of them are gonna be created equally going into this next stage of the market. So there are the market caps at the moment. Let's have a quick look back at our menu. That leads me on to not all altcoins will be uh, strong during this next reset. So I've got some examples here, which I'll show you on the chart. Engine, Filecoin, The Graph, compared to Sol and Matic. And this is just looking at the charts now. As I said, everything can change, but I just want to demonstrate some points looking at support and resistance and what altcoins were doing prior to the crash and what they're currently doing now after the crash. I'll start with Engine. Now, this isn't to say that any of these projects are bad. I actually like all of the projects that I've got here, but I want to know which ones are going to lag the market and which ones are going to recover quicker. At least this is the way that I can differentiate between those. So engine before the crash was uh, below its 50%. So below halfway point between its major low and major high. And as the crash happened, it went even further down, testing old uh, resistance, so becoming support. And currently after a couple of days of recovery, we're still nowhere near our 50% level. Compare that with something like Solana, which has had a pretty swift recovery after a solid shakeout. So before the crash, Solana was trading at all-time highs. At the crash, it went to 50% and basically 61%. It closed almost dead on its 50% level at around $35. The next day, which is just closed, surged and got us back into its uh, reaccumulation zone at the highs. So you can see the strength difference between these cryptocurrencies. And it's not to say that Engine won't come back because I don't think NFTs are going anywhere. I think DeFi is going to be fantastic moving forward yet again, but they're all going to have their seasons. And currently Solana is showing much stronger signs of recovery. Now, if I move this back to a, an all time low on Solana, it gives us a dead on 50% hit. And you know that they are areas that I look for solid support and a good buy zone. So those $29, $30 levels were perfect on Solana. I happened to be on the live stream looking at it at the time. I was not buying Solana at that time, but I said that looks like a fantastic buy order for Solana. Look, I said it, I didn't do it, big deal. Anyone can do that. Uh, next time, hopefully we get it next time, uh, that is definitely gonna be a spot that I'll look to get some more Solana. But right now, 46 is obviously looking better than the all-time highs at around 58, 59 bucks. So you can see the difference between the, the strength of these cryptos. One was above its 50%, crashed to it and recovered. The other, as in engine, was trading below it and it's still trading below it. So it's just the signs of weaknesses within the cryptos for the time being. Now I've got to look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, some of the majors, but what we may expect moving forward from this point, I'm looking at longer recoveries, sentiment has shifted. When the market's going up, it's easier for it to keep going up. When the market's going down, it's easy for it to keep going down. So I just gotta make sure that I don't get suckered into the, the bull. So it's like the bull trap, markets moves up, and I believe that, yes, we have to get back to this all-time high sooner rather than later because some news comes out, etc. So I've got to keep a level head about myself and just realize that we could be down at these levels longer than I would like. Just like we crashed 
longer than I would have liked, but I don't control the markets. Watch your 50% levels. I just demonstrated that on these uh, cryptos up here and you can go through and check it out for yourself with Filecoin, with the graph, and then see the same thing with, with Matic as well. Watch how each market recovers day by day. This is a day by day process at this point in time. Watch the lows compared to previous lows as well. So if they start, if the markets start to make lower lows, that's a weak sign. Even if the next day they shoot up 10, 15, 30%, like we've just seen with some of the cryptos moving 30 to 50% on the rebound. But you just want to watch where the lows keep coming in compared to the previous lows because that's going to give you a sign of strength and weakness in those individual cryptocurrencies because now we've had a breakup of the market things are scattered, things are chaotic. And so the market is now going to try to find some order and you want to be on the right side of that. Capitulation, recovery. It did feel a lot like March 2020. Talked about that on the live stream. Basically, we had a very fast move down 30, 40% in a day. Overall, we hit about 53% on the drop from the top. Very, very uh, big moves on high volume. We did not take out the lows as well. That's a good sign. We didn't take out the 28,800 level on this crash. So that's a good sign. We're going to have to keep following it day by day. Now, I'll look at the signs on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. And if we have time, I'll look at Solana, Matic, and Monero. Also looking pretty good there. But for Bitcoin, Ethereum, we have uh, the levels that I was looking at was around 37,500 for Bitcoin. We managed to close above that. And then the next level I'm looking for is 42 ish to 43,000. Just like I was calling for 60,500 back on April 18th, needing to get above this level, just like we did here, we had another capitulation bar. So if the market can recover above the high here, which is 43,500, then we are looking like the bears are losing control. Doesn't mean we won't go down again, but at least we're able to recover from the point that everyone had to capitulate at, whether it was the leverage positions, institutions, if they need to get rid of a little bit more, uh, retail traders. So we'd be able to, we want to be able to recover past that level. So somewhere around the 44K would be a nice clean beginning. That doesn't get us out of the woodwork because we're essentially hitting on some resistance of these previous lows. So that's just the first minor sign. Because uh, if we, we trade to this level where we are now and then fall back, we have not had a higher high. You can see here on the days, each of the days is lower high. The next part is critical to get above one of these highs at the moment. So past 44K, we then want to get into these low areas, which means we're back to the point before the market really began to break down. So those levels are around 48K. It's in a range. So we're looking between the sort of 47 to 50K. We've got a lot of closes here before the market broke down. So we'll put a rough guide of around 48K, give us our alerts and just keep that on the chart uh, at that level. So Bitcoin is looking at some first signs of recovery because we had the capitulation. The following day was a solid move up. We got strong volume to get us there, not out of the woodwork. We need to close higher. What could happen next is moving up to those lows and then a fallback. If we get that, ideally we want to get a higher low. So it's okay to come back. I, ex I suspect we will after such a solid move down, especially as the lengths extended. You can see this drop from this point to here is much shorter than this move here. And so this is like a wave one, two, three, four, and then a potential five. A five generally is not the size of this, but it may be 100% of that. So we need to see where this market ends up. It could end up there, could end up there. And then we can start to measure this move from that point. So that means we may break these levels or we may not. It just depends where the market decides to move up to. If it happens to keep going and double top with this area, it's probably not going to be a far fall, but it will still be uh, pretty scary because we're not out of the woodwork yet. So keep those in mind. They're the levels that I'm looking for. We've got a first minor sign. We need to see what happens over the next few days to see if we get some more support in terms of support areas or levels that we could hit up against before we see a correction. So the other market to look at is Ethereum and ADA. ADA I'll take a look at now because it's got more strength than the other markets. This is looking good because we had the drop, huge volume, 95 cent low recovery. And yesterday's recovery brought us back above the reaccumulation zone above the highs. You can see here the close was at $1.80. And that was the 
highest close, taking out the the quick run up to the top at 246, that was a highest close over these levels. That's a pretty strong sign for Cardano. So that's why I still see this as much stronger. You want to compare this to something like Engine or the graph way further down. Um, so I want to be consolidating into stronger projects at this time because nothing's saying that those other projects are out of their drops or out of their reaccumulation zones if they happen to be reaccumulating. So this is looking stronger. For Ethereum, similar sort of setup, except it did drop a bit further, obviously after it had run up pretty high. So ETH down 57%, took out the $2,000 lows, but quickly reversed, came back into this zone, good sign. And then yesterday's bar, good volume again and closed extra high and it got us to nearly $2,800, which was the support level that I was looking for. We dropped, hit it on support, uh, sorry, resistance again, and now we're moving above it. So today we wanna see a move into the highs. Ideally, we don't see it drop below these closes that were set on the capitulation day, which is uh, 2,400. But again, day by day, the early signs are there at least, but we're not there just yet, but at least it's looking good. And we didn't see a further fall yesterday and hopefully not today. So they are those three that are looking solid. Now, the other couple I wanted to have a look at, Solana, Matic, we've looked at Solana. I'm gonna, I'll jump to Monero, which is one that people don't tend to look at, but it's a good privacy coin. Monero is looking strong after a big drop. $290, it got absolutely smashed and the recovery has been quite good on very, very high volume. It didn't get all the way back to these lows, but if you're looking for an entry after uh, Monero went pretty crazy into $500, probably that dollar, uh, 160 bucks is pretty cool. The big side to this is the Bitcoin chart. Now the Bitcoin chart shows really strong strength again. The crash came down into these levels good buying opportunity, it's bounced back above the old resistance. So that's why I like this, it's bounced above all of these old supports, that's a pretty strong sign, even though it's at its low. So these are the differences comparing where the market was prior to the crash to after the crash, and this obviously looks so much stronger than looking at engine. One last market to recap was ADA Bitcoin. So ADA Bitcoin trading well and truly at all time highs, the crash date, bounced off the old highs, so found support at the old resistance. Let's see what happens today. It is trending down a little, but I suspect we'll probably range into this zone. Otherwise, it was a good sign to say that we will probably stay higher up in the ranges against its Bitcoin value, which then just adds a strength to the ADA USD chart. So overall, these are the markets that are looking strong. We've obviously looked at the differences between the weaker markets day by day with the majors like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano, as Cardano looks to potentially flip Binance on the uh, coin market cap, we're at 63 billion for Binance and Cardano is at around 58 billion. I'm bullish on the market long term. I think this next section is going to take some time. I think people will probably get bored and will go through that sideways period. People who left the market scared probably will come back late in the market again and miss the good gains. Don't be one of those. Make sure you're following the channel. Subscribe, bell notification icon, like the video up. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. Click it. And then uh, follow on Twitter as well, Instagram daily Q&As. If that's your way to stay with the market during this period because you've got no more cash, at least do that. Go and do what you love in life and then come back to continue learning and investing. Don't go anywhere. Market's not over just yet. I hear a lot of people calling for a 25 or a 20 or a 12K Bitcoin. I, I, I can't say that just yet because we have had a solid drop. Thanks very much, guys. I hope you found some value from it. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.